care of them. Interesting, in that little verse, sin no more. Basically, he's saying, don't continue in sin now. Very interesting. So sometimes Christians suffer because of disobedience. We talked about sins of commission. Uh, let's talk about sins of omission. Sins, I'll explain it this way. Sins for failing to do right. Sins for failing to do right. Wow, that could be a sin. Yeah, if you have it within your means, within your ability, within your wherewithal, to do something right for somebody and you don't do it, it's sin in the eyes of God. Wow, Lord, that's strict. Yeah, I know. See, if we don't know that, my people suffer for lack of knowledge. We have to know that. Remember when the Lord talked about uh, somebody, actually it wasn't the Lord, wasn't it the Apostle Paul? If you see your brother in need and you have the means to help him and you don't, what did he say about that? How does the love of God abide in you? You, see, you, you know, I'm not talking about somebody who's constantly, you know, but somebody that needs help and you can help them and they're worthy of that help. You have to make that decision because God, God does. And you have the means to help them. Sometimes just a word of advice. Sometimes encouragement. Maybe you have something in your house you don't need. Maybe you got an extra refrigerator. Uh, have you ever given a car away? I've had nothing but old heaps and I gave, I forget if it's two or three old heaps away. But to the person I gave them to, wow, thanks. They weren't worth much, but they worked. One of them was a missionary in Mexico. The car was running everything, it needed, it needed something and I told them what it was, but you can have it. So Lord, make sure I got a better old heap the next time. I've had lots of old heaps. I'm just using that as an example. Didn't have much I could give him, but I had an extra car at the time because I had just had a lot of old cars. I was buying and selling, not to make money, but to keep a car in the family that ran, that I could rely on, that could get me to work. So sometimes, and I know, I know you, you guys are very, very generous, but I'm just sharing this, that when we have the ability to help somebody in need and we don't, Sin of omission, we didn't do anything. That's a sin. Ouch! Ouch. <laughs> James 4, 17. Therefore to him who knows to do good and does not do it, to him it is sin, James 4, 17. Uh, is that clear enough? For him that knows the good and doesn't do it. Oh, Lord. So we got to three of the things. Why do Christians suffer? Number one, genetics. Number two, lack of knowledge. Number three, disobedience. Maybe a believer is suffering because they've been disobeying God. And then they're wondering why they've been suffering in whatever area. Like the man by the pool of Bethesda. Had he gone back to sin, Jesus said, don't sin, don't sin again. That's the worst thing. We don't know that he didn't go back and sin again. And if he did, probably a worse thing came upon him because of his disobedience. So we're, we're saying that's not for everybody, but sometimes, sometimes that's what it is. And it's wonderful for somebody that's suffering with something. In his, and there are many ways to suffer. Loneliness abandonment, poverty. There are a lot of things. I'm not, didn't put any of those for a reason, but there are a lot of ways people can suffer. But when you can, as a Christian, when you can give them the word of God, when you can tell them, when you can give them an answer, if you talk to them and listen, and if the Lord shows you that's probably the area, and you begin to talk to them about an area, and all of a sudden the light comes on, and they say, oh, that's it. Oh, the difference that makes. It's like some people have an illness and they go to the doctor and the doctor can't figure out and the doctor, one day maybe they keep going and they find a doctor that's able to figure out, put their finger on what's bugging them. 
Oh, that person, they just laugh. Oh, oh, just that information. Now I know what I'm dealing with. Now I know what steps I can take. And most important, now I know what to pray about. Specifically. Very specifically. Oh, that's just wonderful when you know. So some of these area, areas we've discussed, and we'll get... Uh, we'll get into more of it next time. We'll, we'll try to get into stronger areas. Like I said, I'm leaving the fifth area, the strongest area that I want to discuss for last. But when you, if you can help somebody, the light will come on and you will have blessed their life. And this is what I wish pastors and other churches that don't preach the gospel would begin to do to help the people. That's worth a million dollars, just that information. Sometimes people go from doctor to doctor to doctor to doctor and they, they can't put their finger. They don't know what's wrong with you. And the people are bewildered and, and the Christians pray for me. What's wrong? I don't know. I just have all these issues. But I don't know specifically. Man, if they can find out what it is. Oh, that is so good. That is so good. And for a believer, that knowledge alone, that knowledge alone that they know what to ask people to help with, to pray with, that's power. That's why. But sometimes you have to know what to pray about. Sometimes, like somebody said, if you just pray in general, well, Lord, you know what I have need of, Lord. I answer my prayers. Amen. Hmm. Well, if you pray in general, maybe God will just answer you in general. God will say, okay, amen. Yeah. Sometimes you have to pray specifically. Now, if, if you don't know, then ask God for the knowledge. Lord, what, what am I to pray about? And then spend time praying about you can, so you can learn what to pray about. Well, that doesn't make uh, good sense. It does. Think about it. <laughs> Lord, show me what I need to pray about. That's why praying in the Spirit is powerful. Sometimes we don't know what we ask for. Romans 8, isn't that Romans 8? Sometimes we don't know how to pray for as we are. But the Spirit makes intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. Sometimes the Holy Spirit has just had to intercede for us. But pray. And let God, if God's Spirit wants to make intercession for you with groanings that can't be uttered, that's because you were praying. You had to be praying so He could do that. Sometimes I've had to pray, Lord, what do I pray about in this situation? That's why sometimes I ask, what's the problem? Well, Pastor, the Lord will show you. No, He won't. You show me. You asking me to pray about something, I usually won't ask you why. But if I ask you why, then you've asked me to pray, you better tell me why. Or I'm not going to pray because I'm going to waste my time. Sometimes people just want me to pray in general. Okay, and I'll, I'll do that. I'll remember and I'll pray for you. I'll spend time in the office praying. That's why I like to pray because there's no, no... Sometimes I'll come in here and pray, but usually I'm alone in the office. I can pray. Sometimes I pray general prayers, but sometimes I need to know specifics. Sometimes God will require you to pray specifically. So I ask him, Lord, what do I pray about? <laughs> ask him! Yes. Amen. Amen! Oh, this is going to get better. I can hardly wait to go to number four. Amen. Somebody say amen. I'm going to stop amen. there. Amen. I'm going to stop there. Heavenly Father, I'm just going to put my hands out.